Good morning, church. It is wonderful to hear from our pastor, isn't it? Just a few short days. We're going to get busy as we don't know. <laughs> but we are going to be very busy for the kingdom. It would be wonderful for Jesus to return and find us at work, serving him at work, saving people, saving kids on the street, and doing many other ministries. So continue praying with us. So one more thing that wasn't captured in the announcement, we, we wanted to take all of you guys to the land before we begin building. Because we... Maybe on the 30th, we're going to start drilling the borehole there. So if um, you guys want to come next Sunday after the third service, by 2, we're going to gather here and drive to the land, you know, have some time of prayer there and, and see the land so that when you're praying for it, you pray for what you have seen. <laughs> So uh, make a point with us. We'll remind you again. If you're able to do that, it, it will be a blessing. Uh, our bus is not sufficient to carry everyone. It's only 29-seater. So if you can tag a few people with you in your car, that will be a blessing. Amen? Amen. And we'll go together and pray together there and see what the Lord has for us. Let us pray together as we get into today's study. Lord, we thank you for the provision of your word. We thank you that you are here with us, Lord, and as we read your word, we ask that your spirit will be at work in us. Your spirit has always been at work since the beginning of time, before our time, and we are asking today that you do something in our hearts as we listen to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. We concluded last week with the story of uh, Philip, Philip who was one of the deacons who was appointed uh, after there was a little bit of a trouble in the church how uh, the distribution was done and a certain group of people, the Hellenists, complained that their widows were not being uh, served properly or they would miss supplies. And uh, the apostle did not dismiss the issue. Instead, they said to the people, bring to us, appoint seven men, bring them to us, men of good reputation, men who are filled with the Holy Spirit and they have wisdom. Bring them to us, seven of them, and we'll pray and they will serve the tables as we dedicate our time to prayer and teaching of God's Word. And now the other important thing to note is, as we are, this apostle is saying, they dedicate themselves to the praying and reading of God's word. They don't mean, or he did mean that the rest of the people appointed are not to do the same. For how will they be effective if they don't pray? How will they be effective if they don't read the word of God? So, they have a little bit more responsibility to do also. And we are going to see what is happening. Last week we saw that when there was uh, this dispatch in Jerusalem and people were gathered uh, because of the persecution, they went to various places. Philip went to Samaria. And the Bible tells tells us that he went there and preached the gospel, and many people, multitudes, accepted Jesus Christ. Many people came to the faith. One of the guys who was mentioned was Simon the sorcerer. <laughs> Practiced sorcery, and, you know, he was a great man because he did a lot of things that people recognized. And when this happened, the Bible said that he believed and he was baptized. And when the apostle was sent, uh, two of them, Peter and John, to go and see what is happening, 
They laid their hands upon the people and they received the Holy Spirit. And this one man said, can I get some? I got some money. I got some moolah. Can you get money? In return, I want the gift so that when I lay my hands upon the people, they'll receive the Holy Spirit. And right away, Peter told him, man, your heart is not right. You think the gift of God can be bought with money? No, no, no. You're only mad because you haven't received this. You, he said here in verses 23, For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. You're poisoned, you're bitter because the Lord is not using you in this way. But you know, we, 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 we didn't pay for him to use us this way. It is by his divine choosing that this is happening. The first time when Peter preached the gospel and the Holy Spirit came upon the people, he said, what you have witnessed here belongs also to you and your children if you will believe. It's not restricted to just a few people. And now we see a turnaround with the text that we have today from verses 26 of chapter 8. And the title of our text today is The Divine Appointment. Now an angel of the Lord, not the angel, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down to Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. Think about it. <laughs> it the reason why that is important, that the Holy Spirit will drop that phrase in there. This is desert. Consider this man who has been serving multitudes and thousands of people. They are serving tables. And then when persecution arose, he went to Samaria and he's preaching. And thousands of people are getting born again. People are getting healed. Evil spirits are getting out of people. It's amazing what God is doing through him, through his hands. And now, the Holy Spirit is sending him to a place not very known to him because he didn't plan to go to such a place. Maybe in his heart he thought, May, you know, because the Lord is walking in this place, these men and women, they need discipleship, Right? You know, when people get born again, you want to disciple them. And more so, considering Simon the sorcerer, who wants to buy the gift. This man needs discipleship. He needs people around. Why do you want me to go and just leave these people alone? You know, there are other apostles. There are other men. You know, there were chosen seven one is dead. They have, you know, five more. Can you pick one of them and just send him around to go to this mission so that he can go and do that? He, he's making him aware that whatever place I'm sending you, it's dry. <laughs> it's dry. It, it's not crowded. There's, there's no rupa <laughs> There's no good infrastructure in there. There's no, you know, Java. There's no, there's no these nice places. There's, there's no paved roads. It's a desert. There's nothing much to gain from this place. So as I'm sending you, consider that. Have it in mind. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, A eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship. This eunuch, you know who these eunuchs are, before going into a lot of details, right? <laughs> this eunuch is in charge. He is the minister of finance like we'd have one today in our country. 
This is a man who is protected in a way. This is a man who has a lot of privileges. You know, he, he makes budget with my money, with our money. <laughs> Whatever comes into the country, he knows how it is distributed to different uh, counties and different departments. He knows. He's a great man. He was in, in charge. He was a man of great authority, the Bible tells us. And he had gone to Jerusalem to worship. I don't know if it is something he did every year, or this was the first time he's going there. I don't know if he had the Bible, or he got one when he was coming back. I don't know. What we are told here that he was he had gone to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. Pretty amazing. That is why we call it the divine appointment. Because this man, he's not aware of the plans of God. Philip also, because he's just given himself to the leading of the Holy Spirit, he's going there anyways because God has said it. And when, you know, he comes close, the Spirit of God tells him, hey, go and overtake this chariot. And you wonder what is going to happen because this is a very wealthy man. This is a man with great authority this is a man who was God with him. How are you going just to, you know, run beside him without these people trying to get you off? They're going to run you off too soon if these people are being watchful, if they are protecting their master. And where he ran to was very close because the Bible told, tells us that when he got close, he had him reading. In other words, this was loud. <laughs> the chariot is moving, and he's running past this guy, and he's hearing what this man is reading. I mean, some of us, we're even afraid of reading our Bible loud, even in our own houses. Like, they're going to hear me reading the Bible. <laughs> we, we sometimes are ashamed of God's word, yet we know who God is. This man is not quite aware of the scripture. That is why God is making this appointment for him to know Jesus Christ. He's running past and he's hearing this man reading. Like, hmm, do you understand what you're reading? As many of us would say, man, I don't. How do you understand all these Levitical things, Leviticus and the laws, and do not eat this, do not eat pork? No, 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 I want it. <laughs> do not eat this animal, don't go this road, you shall obey this, you shall... Well, and you come to numbers and it's just the names of people. And like, how, how is this significant to our spiritual life today when we are hearing Amaz and Israel and there's a lot of fights? Well, how does that apply to my life today? Many people are asking questions today. What about Israel? Uh, are they going to be wiped away completely? Right? Philip read and had him reading the prophet. Prophet Isaiah, and ask a very brilliant question. Do you understand? 
because that makes a whole lot of a difference and it changes the conversation. If you'd say you don't understand, you're like, well, thanks for your time. I'll be on my way. But if you don't understand, there's an opportunity. And in fact, this man was kind enough to say, hey, join me here. For how can I if someone else will not explain this to me? How can I if I don't receive guidance? You know, that is the sole reason why the church of Jesus Christ exists. God has appointed people who will teach his word. It doesn't mean that we, we cannot know it sitting in our houses. The Holy Spirit is with us. He's with us every time in our houses, whatever place we go. But it's also our job to explain scripture to people so that we will understand the will of God for all of us. And he appointed Philip for this reason, to go and meet this man, this great man. Maybe we would be fearing to go closer to this guy because he's a government official. He's in charge. He has authority like men. Maybe we leave it to the bishops who have bigger, bigger churches to go and preach to this man. But that is not how that works. He, he didn't send Peter the apostle. He didn't say John. He didn't send Philip. You remember the other Philip who is amongst the disciples? He didn't send him. He sent this Philip. This is so important for us to actually understand that this responsibility, this job is not just for the people standing here. Remember, he was a deacon. And he was a deacon who was well-versed in what the Bible says. You know, th this, this should be a test for the pastors of this church and all the staff of this church to just go open a random scripture, like, there you go, preach Jesus from that point. He asked Philip to come and sit with him. And the place in the scripture which he read was, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, man, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or some other person? Who, who is the prophet talking about? This man, he, he didn't understand it to the fullest. But he was just wondering, you know, who, who is the prophet talking about? Is he himself? Is he another person? That is the point. And that is an entry point. Because you're wondering who the scripture is talking about. And God has provided a way for him to know who the scripture is talking about. So Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture in Isaiah 53, preached Jesus to him. Wow, how wonderful. How wonderful to know that Jesus was preached from the prophet Isaiah coming until meeting this man on a face value. You know what it means? That Philip was well versed in the scripture. When people are called to serve table, it doesn't mean that is a lesser responsibility. 
you actually have a greater duty to do serving people and explaining the Scripture to them. It, this would be pathetic. It would be absurd that this man, if he didn't know the Scripture, what could have happened? Like, man, you can't even explain this. You, you don't even know what... You don't know why you're believing in Jesus Christ because you ask people today, you know, are you a Christian? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you a believer? Yeah, yeah. Well, explain to me. You say you're saved. you saved from what? Who saved you? What was the circumstance around it? Explain it. Like, well, they, 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 they kind of told me that, you know, Jesus, this Jesus went to the cross and he died for everybody who wants him. And I kind of flowed with the people, you know. <laughs> so I think I'm, you know, and because I don't want to go to hell, I'm told that, you know, when he saves you, he spares your life from the heats of hell. Why are you born again? Why are you a Christian? Do you understand what you read? Well, various times we'll read the scriptures, read the Bible, and there's some things that we don't get at the moment, like right then. What do you do? You forsake reading the Bible? No, no, no. You continue reading the Bible. Because in John, the Gospel of John, he, he says to us that when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, he shall teach you all truth. He will actually remind you all truth. So how can you be reminded of anything you haven't read, you haven't encountered? So we got to go back to the basics, to read the Bible. Read the Bible and read the Bible. He began teaching this man I don't know for how long, but he preached Jesus to the Ethiopian eunuch. You know, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 2, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ, and him crucified. That is all I want to know. And do you know the beauty of knowing that? That if you know it, you don't want to shut your mouth. You want to go and tell it to the world. Tell it to the mountain. Tell it to the valleys. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Blessed are the feet of those who take the good news to the world. Blessed is this man who heeded the voice of God. Say, I'm going to go. No matter how insignificant we may feel about ourselves, when we determine to proclaim Jesus, we make a difference. When we are determined to preach Jesus, will make a difference. Let me read you a little story here. There's a man called Edward Kimball. He was a Sunday school teacher in Detroit in in 1850s. When a young visitor told Kimball that he had no interest in knowing Jesus, he could not let it go. Kimball went to his workplace, purchased a shoe shine, and began to witness to him. And before he left, this man was D.L. Moody, and he received Jesus Christ as his Lord. Moody became a powerful evangelist who reached more than a million people with the gospel. And then another man called Frederick Myers invited him to his congregation because he heard about what happened, inviting Moody to London. He preached three sermons 
every one of them entitled Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Revival swept through the church and Maya's ministry was transformed. J. Wilmer Chapman came to Christ in Maya's church and eventually moved to Chicago where he led Billy Sunday to salvation. Sunday became a great preacher and Mordecai Ham was saved at one of his meetings. Ham went on and became one of the first tent revivalists. One night in North Carolina, under Ham's large circus tent, where people stood shoulder to shoulder, a young man came to check out the place. That night, in 1936, Billy Graham came to know Jesus Christ. Because of one seemingly insignificant Sunday school teacher was serious about winning the lost, generations of people around the globe were impacted by Christ. So, what you do for Jesus matters a lot. Go out and tell Jesus. Tell of what he has done for you. Don't think it's a lesser responsibility to speak to a child. You do not know who they are. You do not know what God will do through them. Just a Sunday school teacher who heeded the voice of God. And he said, I'm not going to let this boy go. I'm not going to let this man go. I'm going to preach to them. And do you know that there are many instances when the Holy Spirit has spoken to us to go and speak to one person and you're like, God, I know this is just my feeling. I don't want to go. I want to hear your voice clearly telling me that I should go and speak to that man, that woman. I know for many of us, if you'd be given an opportunity to preach, would lean towards speaking to a larger congregation, uh, a crusade. And it's a noble thing. It's good because many people at once are coming to Jesus Christ. But as it is important to preach to thousands, it is also so important to witness to one man. It is important. We don't know how influential this man was when he went back to his hometown. Maybe the queen heard about Jesus for the first time. Maybe his colleagues got born again. We don't know. But there's something. When people, are get, when people get born again and they are excited about it, oh man, it is so refreshing. You don't get born again and you're so gloomy, you're so tired. People look at you and they just, you, you repel people. It's not good. Just one Sunday school teacher decides I'm going to share the gospel. These children we are ministering to here, we don't know their destiny. What we know is that every time we meet people, that is a divine appointment. Because we didn't ask God for it. He provided the time and an opportunity for it. We don't know about the next hour. We don't know about tomorrow. But we know the one who holds tomorrow. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? You know, this one actually gives us the details of what they were talking about. <laughs> he taught him a lot of things, including baptism and being filled with the Holy Spirit and all these things. That is why he saw water and he remembered what 
The, the, the baptism was not talked about in the book of Isaiah right there where he was reading. You can be sure that Philip explained the scriptures and maybe shared a testimony of what God has been doing for this time and the persecution and people are being run all over. In fact, he's maybe shared that my colleague just died. <laughs> he was murdered for believing in Jesus Christ. And this man maybe said, well, whatever it takes, I want to follow Jesus. Say, hey, look, here's water. This is a wealthy man. Maybe this water is not very clean. It's not very hygienic. But nonetheless, he saw water. And it was not water in the cup. It was a lot of it. They went down. And this man was taken down the water. He says, Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered very quickly and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So you go back to when he was asking, hey, who is the prophet talking about? He's talking about Jesus Christ, whom you are believing, who you just believed in. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That was the whole point of this divine appointment. For this man to recognize Jesus as the Son of God. And the question for us is, is Jesus Lord over your lives? Is he Lord over your life? Did you just give him a portion of your heart, like just a little bit of it? You just gave Jesus your, your, your front porch, your backyard, but your bedroom is out of bounds. Your innermost is out of bounds. Say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. Tells you that this was a man in authority. With the people who accompanied him, he said, hey, stop. We have an important assignment, a business that we must take care of before moving. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he was baptized. You remember when the Holy Spirit was giving Philip instruction? He told him, go down this road from Jerusalem to Gaza. It is a desert. All of a sudden, we have what? We have water. Because when God begins to provide things, He provides to the end. He provides the means by which we'll be saved, the means by which we'll be baptized, the means by which we will grow in His Word. He provides every means for that. They did find water. They went, and he baptized him. Now when, he, when they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. The Spirit of the Lord raptured this man so that the eunuch saw him no more. I do not know the possible reason, but this is what I'm just thinking. Just days passed, or weeks, or whatever time, he prayed, and this man called Simon the sorcerer believed. And when he saw that 
there was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is working in people. He wanted to buy the gift of God with money because he had a lot of money. And now Philip is in another situation with a very wealthy man. Maybe at the end, this man would have wished to give him a token of appreciation and say, well, thanks, man. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for riding with me. And now that I have fully understood what the Scripture says, I'm born again and, you know, God has begun a great work in me. I don't want to send you back home empty-handed. I don't know, just my speculation. He's a wealthy man. He has a lot of things with him in the chariot, with people. Because sometimes these things, we can receive them, and too soon they will corrupt us. Instead of always receiving what God wants us to do, I would want to go to this next person because I want to go and receive something from them. You go and it creates an expectation that if I go and preach to these wealthy people, there is something in return. Maybe. But because God knows things ahead of time, he took him so quickly before anything would happen, before they would begin to plan a few things like, how, you know, maybe it's just a good thing, like, hey, I'm going to pay for you air ticket, come to Ethiopia and share the same thing you shared with me, with my queen, the people around the palace, come and share. It's a good thing, but too soon, these things, they corrupt us so quickly. And this, this, this man has a lot of assignment to do. He, he has a lot of preaching to do. And you're thinking about it. They came out and the Spirit of the Lord took him away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went his way rejoicing. What a weird fella. I mean, you're just having someone with you. You're talking. He's explaining things to you. You come out of the water. Now you see, now you don't. You can't find him. Like, did I just receive the gospel from a ghost? How am I going to explain this even to the queen? That the person who preached the gospel to me, he's no more. <laughs> what happened? He disappeared. They'll be like, man, you are out of your precious mind. What happened? But because it was a God-ordained meeting, this person did go thinking, wow, what just happened? He went away rejoicing. Some of the people, honestly, who shared the gospel with us, some of them, we, we don't even know them. They shared the gospel with us, we don't know where they are. Maybe we can remember their name, maybe we don't. We just know that there's some group of people, or someone came, shared the gospel, they, they went. Maybe they were not raptured, but you just, you don't see them no more. As it is important to preach to a lot of people, it is also very important to preach to one person, explaining the scriptures to them. You know what happened at the end? A Philip was found after he was caught up, like, whoo! He was teleported to a different location. It was like, God, I like this traveling idea. I like this traveling arrangement. Can we do it one more time? <laughs> oh, I would love that. Now you find me in Kakamega. You, you try to get me for lunch. I'm in Mombasa. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. But you know, God doesn't repeat these things every time so that we create expectation that he's going to do it this way. 
He's going to do it this way. He's going to do it this way. That is why you cannot, you know, program the Holy Spirit and say every Thursday is a miracle service. No, 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 no. Every Wednesday is deliverance service. How do you do that? Where do you find the guts to do that? You cannot box him and say, hey, you come and do your thing this day. He does not work like that. He will deliver you in your bedroom. <laughs> he will deliver you when you're driving, when you're walking, when you're eating, whatever. It doesn't matter. He's God. He's everywhere. He's all-knowing. And he, do, he does whatever he wish. But Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he did what? He preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. He preached the gospel. You know, this is one man that has a title of an evangelist. In Acts 21, they call him Philip the evangelist. He never rests until people hear God's word. I wish many people in our world today, instead of just calling themselves big names, apostle, uh, prophet, and whatever, you, you, you must have a doctor before you call my name. You have archbishop, so and so and so. No, 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 no. no. God just wants people, normal people like you and I, to go and preach the gospel to people. These titles, you know, the, the, they won't break a line in heaven because Reverend so-and-so has come. He goes first, and the rest of us, we follow. You know what is important? It's for you and I to listen to the voice of God and to do what he says. That is the whole essence of what he wants us to do. And now we have come to the end of chapter 8. We're beginning another chapter. Chapter 9 is also centered in another man called Saul. Saul of Tarsus. And from there we're going to pick up a lot of many things that are happening. He's going to be a man sent to the Gentiles and preaching the gospel to many people. And we thank God for this flow as we see how the Holy Spirit is working. As I bring the worship team, I want to remind us, church, to always be involved. You know, God has called us. Maybe he's not called you to be a pastor. Maybe he's not called you to be a missionary. Maybe he's not called you to be an evangelist. Maybe not even, you know, a Sunday school teacher. But if there's something always in you that can present Jesus to the next person. Maybe it's your neighbor. Maybe it's that colleague of yours. You normally try to share the gospel with them, just dodging. Maybe it's your teenager that you need to sit down and share the gospel with. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's someone else. Just... Just there's someone who needs the gospel, always. God has made these provisions. He, he never failed before. He didn't fail yesterday. He won't fail now. He's God. The God of the mountain is the God of the valley. When things go wrong, he makes them right. You know, and it's the gospel of Jesus Christ that makes everything right. The eunuch was just reading, doesn't understand. But the Holy Spirit sent Philip to make things right. Maybe you don't know. Maybe the Holy Spirit is at work today and he wants to make things right with you. You want to make things right. It's up to you.
Have we just given the Lord a lip service? Say, yes, I believe, but it's not in our hearts. You know, this distance from, from our head to our hearts, maybe, you know, I don't know, 12 to 16 inches, something. It is the farthest distance for things to travel. Fastest. And it's also the longest for things to travel. Tell them, yeah, I know him. Yeah, I've heard about him. Yeah, this and that. Is he really in your heart? Philip asked him a very good question. Do you believe in your heart? He said, of course, yes, I believe. That Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is God. Friends, if you believe that Jesus is God, you will not entertain your former tendencies, your former lifestyles. You will not. Because lie and darkness does not mix together. Those who are born of light, they do things that are related to the light. Where are you? You want God, you want God to do something? Maybe it was your divine appointment today for you to join us, for you to be with us. Because the Holy Spirit is interested in helping you making the right decisions. He's interested in walking with you. He is interested in making your life new again. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful. We're thankful for your provision. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ who came and died for our sins. We thank you that we have freedom today, not because of what we have done, but because of what you have done. And I know, God, you have bestowed your Spirit upon us for a reason, for us to live right and also to bring other people into your kingdom, to enjoy the wonderful blessings that you have bestowed upon the children of God. Thank you, God. And we thank you also for giving us an opportunity that we can go and share your word with many people. As it is important to preach to thousands and millions of, millions of people at the same time, it is also equally important to preach to one man, one woman. We always pray and we continue to pray that you always will open doors for us to be bold enough to share your word. And Lord, I pray if there is anyone amongst us this morning who needs the restoration, Holy Spirit, I pray that you walk in them. Anyone who needs forgiveness, Holy Spirit, I pray that you forgive them. If you have any backslider, Lord, I pray that you bring them to you again. For you say in your word that when, we, when you are lifted, you will draw men to you. We pray that you will draw people to yourself through your word as we speak it. Lord, even for those who are sick amongst us, I pray for your hand of healing upon them. Any of our relatives who are sick, going through depression and anger issues and many things happening, Lord, I pray that you begin a work in them. And thank you for these testimonies that are awaiting us 
of the good things you're doing to your own people. We thank you, God. And as we give to you this morning, we pray that we'll give that which belongs to you and that which brings glory to you because it is you who has blessed us with all these resources. They all belong to you. We're giving back as a way of thanking you. May we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The ushers and the deacons are welcome to receive the offerings and please stand with us for this last song.